Hello friends and welcome back to this series of uh, Windows programming in uh, Visual C and C++. And today we are going to discuss about the kernel objects in Windows. So we will basically see that what are the kernel objects, how they are maintained by the kernel memory in the Windows and how we can use them in the program and how our process manages the kernel object in the program. So this video will be totally a theoretical video. In the next video, I will start some coding on the uh, around the kernel objects and you will be able to see that how you can use the kernel objects in your program. Okay, so let's start this. Let me just open the presentation, the full video mode. Okay, so let us discuss about the kernel objects. Before the kernel objects, we must need to understand that uh, uh, how the system memory is managed. When you start a program, when you launch a process, then your process gets a personal process address space. That process address space is local to your program, is local to your process. Okay, so that memory which is provided to you is the process memory. It's called the process memory. But apart from the process memory, there is a system wide memory. System wide memory means anything is stored in the system will be in that memory will be accessible to all the objects around the system in a by the every program in your system okay so when your system starts an application or you can say that when you launch an application then your system allocates some uh, amount of memory for your kernel when your program gets not your program basically when your system gets started let me correct myself it's like when your system gets started then kernel memory is also in sliced and at the same time, the memory which is available at your disposal for your programs to execute that is also maintained by the system. So your system memory has two parts. One is the part of memory which will be uh, given to you, given to your processes, your programs, where your programs runs, which, which, are, which is private to your processes. And the other type of memory is the kernel memory where the kernel objects resides and those kernel objects are accessible throughout the throughout the uh, system okay by every program so when your system starts system allocates process memory and there is also a kernel memory space each kernel object is simply a memory block allocated by the kernel and is accessible only by the kernel okay what does this mean the second statement let me just uh, show you the second statement this is the pen yeah, this is the second statement is simply a memory block allocated by the kernel. What does this mean? This means that uh, if you create any kernel object or by default any kernel object, if it has been used by your program, then in that case, your kernel, the system kernel allocates a memory block, which is accessible only by the kernel. What does it mean that it is accessible only by the kernel, which mean it means that any change that is done into the kernel object that is done to the kernel object that that can only be done by the kernel itself and not by yourself not through your program right it is accessible only through the kernel in your program you only use the kernel objects you only initialize the kernel objects you only give a name to the kernel object but the memory is allocated in the kernel memory and is accessible by the kernel its lifetime its uh, various uh, uh, its various properties like its uses count right its security descriptor and many other things they are all assessed by the kernel only you cannot change you cannot make any change you can just provide the name to the kernel object and you can just provide like uh, the instructions to the kernel whether any other process can inherit your kernel object or not or if any other process will be able to uh, you know uh, share your kernel object or not right so these are the informations which are sh shared by you with the kernel but all the lifetime management like what will be the lifetime for this kernel object that is all maintained by the kernel memory and nothing and uh, no one else manages it right this memory which is called the kernel memory block is a data structure whose member maintain information about the object right a simple statement no need to explain it 
some members like security descriptor and users count and so on are the same across all object types. These members like security descriptors, users count, these are all same across all object types, which means that any kernel object, whether it's the event kernel object or a mutex kernel object, or you can say the semaphore kernel object or mail slot or any file descriptor object, all these objects, which are the kernel objects, for them, this, these things, security descriptors, uses count, and uh, there are a few others, and that is why I've written so on, so all I cannot list it here. So, all these uh, members, which means there are few members, uh, which are the same across all object types, they are used by all the objects, they are uh, the properties of all the objects, maintain, of all the kernel objects maintained by the kernel, but most are specific to the particular object type, which means that there are few other properties which are specific to your mutex, uh, to your kernel object. Like in case of mutex, if you if you use the mutex, then uh, in case of mutex, there are certain other properties like recursion counter, right? So which is not available with the event kernel object, which is not available with the uh, semaphore kernel object, but that is available to the mutex kernel object. So there are few properties which are specific to a kernel object, but there are also few properties which are not specific to a kernel object, which are common to all the um, objects, kernel objects, right? So I hope you might have understood this. So let's move to the next slide. Let me just close it and move ahead. And uh, if we come here and let's see something about the process kernel handle table. I might have discussed about this one in one of my previous videos. So let me just remind it again to you. What, what does it mean process kernel handle table? So basically when you start your program, when your program gets started, when it's loaded into the memory, then at that time a uh, process kernel handle table is created, right? So there are various uh, properties of uh, that table, like uh, various columns in that table, like one is index, the other one is the pointer to the kernel object memory access mask, which shows that what kind of access you have to that kernel object and there are other flags, right? So whenever you uh, launch any program, your uh, process is in running, then in that case, a process kernel handle is created, handle table is created. And uh, when in the previous video, you might have seen that we have created some variables like handle is equal to create thread. So that thread handle is not, is nothing but this index in this process handle table. It's not actually the address of the kernel object. Please remember this, that whenever you create a handle, then this is not a pointer to the kernel object memory. This is only the index where the information about the kernel object uh, or your uh, kernel object which whatever you have created in your program is stored so that index is uh, the uh, handle that uh, that index is represented by the handle uh, that handle never never ever uh, represents this address or you can say the address to the kernel memory that is not represented by the handle right so if that is not represented by the handle then what is that that is the index in the process handle table right and when you have created a kernel object then it will be created only once you can create one kernel object with a specific name only once and that will be deleted only by the kernel you cannot delete it okay we will discuss in the same uh, slide uh, here no kernel object is destroyed by an api by any api there is no such api which can destroy the kernel object. You cannot uh, call any API which can destroy the kernel object. Let me explain you the reason. Why is that? Uh, the reason is that uh, suppose uh, you know that uh, the kernel object are accessible uh, throughout the system, right? So suppose there are three to four uh, programs which are trying to access same database and we want that only one program or only one process at a time should be able to access the database. So for that, suppose you have used one kernel object for the synchronization, say uh, mutex, so in that case, what will happen that mutex can only allow one of the processes to access the database, right? So suppose if there are four processes which are trying to access and if you have any API which can destroy the kernel object and suppose by, um, by accident, accidentally, the first process which is done with the database access, suppose it destroys the kernel object, then what will happen to the other kernel, ob uh, the other processes which are waiting on the kernel object to get their chance? because these kernel objects are used to synchronize the access, but in, a, in such a manner that one uh, that once one of the object is done, uh, sorry, one of the process is done, then the other process should get the time flies and should get the access uh, to the resource, right? 
So if you have not done that and if you have got an API which can destroy a kernel object then what will happen? One process has accessed the database and it has destroyed the kernel then what will happen? The other processes which are accessing the same database which are uh, sorry which are uh, trying to access the same kernel object called the mu uh, same mutex then in that case what will happen that that mutex will not be available to those uh, process that process and in that case what will happen it will be a dangling handler and it will crash your application right so that is why the uh, there is no api which can be destroy uh, uh, using which you can destroy any kernel object so, right so how this is maintained this is all maintained by the kernel itself and how it is maintained suppose there are three processes which are using a kernel object called mutex suppose m represents the mutex which i am using and there are four processes one two three suppose there are three processes which are using it so p1 and p2 and uh, there is one more process p3 and all these are using the same mutex kernel object they are waiting on the same mutex kernel object to access the database d represent the database suppose right so all these p1 p2 and p3 they want to access d which means the database but they have to wait on the mutex so that they can ensure that yes none of the threads is uh, accessing the database and i should get the time slice right so for that uh, we, you can use the mutex in that scenario and what will happen then uh, suppose p1 p2 and p3 all these are using uh, this mutex object then what will happen that in the kernel the uses count there is a property called uses count for the kernel objects for every kernel object there is a property called uses count so that uses count will become 3 okay so once that uses count will become 3 what will happen because of this uses count this will become a indicator to the kernel object that no right now there are three processes which are using uh, the mutex kernel object right because all these three are using the mutex kernel object so this is an indicator to the kernel memory that yes kernel process that yes uh, there are three processes which are using this mutex kernel object right so suppose this p1 is done and this p1 gets closed right once this p1 gets closed then this three becomes two which means that as soon as one process closes the handle or one process gets uh, ended comes to an end it uh, the the process is done and in, in that in then in that case uh, or or you can say that this process has closed the handle to the mutex kernel object then what will happen that this uh, uses count will, will will be reduced by one right so it will become two suppose this also gets destroyed or you can say this process also done right so in that case what will happen this two will become one right once this p3 is also done then this will become zero once this becomes zero the kernel knows that now this kernel object has uses count zero so which means that none of the processes are using it so i can destroy this so kernel in this case kernel will destroy this kernel object this new text will be destroyed by the kernel itself you cannot use any api there is no such api exposed for you using which you can destroy any kernel object please remember this right so in next video i will explain something more about the process kernel objects right and then we will see in the next video uh, uh, after the next video we will see uh, how you can use the event kernel object and uh, mutex and semaphores and all that right so till then have a nice day and bye bye